Welcome to the section of my channel where I present you budget decks. The decks will be playable, somewhat competitive, but don't expect to top any event with them. In this format, the decks will not cost more than 50 to 80 bucks, and I'll really try to stick to it. And today with a little bit more of a, let's say, fun deck. I mean, the last deck that I presented sounded kind of like a fun deck, but in testing I actually found out it is pretty solid, like the Lights One Spiral deck. So if you are interested in this, definitely check it out. But today it's all about like a dark deck, uh, Predator Plant, Kaiju. It's somewhat around like a breaking your opponent's board deck. It's like a go second and do some stuff deck. It's probably not the best variant of Predator Plants in general, because you can do probably a lot more with the deck. But I just kind of found this version was uh, with Kaiju Summer being back at three, somewhat interesting to play if you actually go second and play against those massive boards. Probably uh, will have problems against like the Pendulum stuff or the Guard Dragon shenanigans where you can summon monsters from the extra deck. But for that you have Kaiju so that works as well. And you can throw the Predator Plant. Actually I think this is pretty good at breaking boards without forcing negates. I mean the problem is if you Kaiju stuff and whatever and they have other kind of negates like Infernity Barrier then you're really screwed because uh, yeah you get you rid of your Kaijus and then can't activate any effect. But I guess you can Kaiju the Infernity Monster and make it a little bit better. But starting out with the deck profile, I actually uh, kind of checked the price. If you want to build a somewhat solid extra deck, um, with Kaiju Slumber being the deck being somewhat expensive at the moment, other than that, the deck is okay-ish. Like the, I think the, the, the Kaiju engine will be the most expensive one in this deck because Predator Plants themselves don't cost that much. I mean, maybe Predator Plant off a Scorpio costs a little bit, but not much because it's a common and like uh, there is... A lot of that cards um, on the market I think I think you'll be somewhere between 50 and 80 bucks like somewhere in between whatever build you choose you could get it for 40 if you cut a lot of extra deck cards and stuff like that I think but uh, that is up to you whether you do with this deck but other than that it's fairly cheap I think it is somewhat fun to play with but I don't know like it's it's more of a funny kind of uh, deck thing rather than like a very very good one but I actually like playing with it most of the time. But you can break quite a lot if you don't draw into what you need to draw. But start now, uh, you run triple the dark kaiju. You could technically run any kaiju, but since you run a lot of darkness and you have the fusion that requires a dark monster and maybe like even, uh, oh, okay, sadly it's level seven, that didn't work. But uh, in general, you know, you know what I mean? Like you have a lot of dark monsters and stuff, works for stuff like super poly as well. If you want to fuse your three opponents monster, then this is technically why you run the dark kaiju you could run any other one but with that it's just simply better um Kamongus, because it's the cheapest one and it's a weak attack one you could go for gamma seal but i think it's too expensive for uh what you use it in this deck uh triple proud plan banks your ogre because now that you can actually spread the predator counters a little bit better you actually uh they work as kaijus too but they special themselves to your side of the field so this is kind of neat in a lot of senses because you actually don't lose out on advantage but you get rid of an opponent's monster, which can be pretty good. Plus, if this card is sent from a field to the graveyard, link summoning, for example, place one predator counter on each face-up monster on your opponent controls. This is pretty strong because then, uh, first of all, you can do other kind of stuff that the predator plants can't do with it, but also you can then use uh, the other predator plant um, from your graveyard or your hand for uh, the tribute as well, so you have a lot of ways to get rid of your opponent's monsters, which can be quite neat because your opponent will not be sustaining any monster uh, usually. I run one per pen spider down because if it's normal special summon, you can target one monster. It targets not that's good, but it's a way to spread predator counters. You actually could go for like a third uh, or a second Columbia Sundew so you can fusion summon more. This was more of an option before the predator plast came out, but I still think it is a viable card because like you can attack over it, you can special summon monster from your deck. It can be quite neat against certain decks. And I like that since it's special summonable by uh, Orphoscopio, so we have another target for that one. Orphoscopio is basically your biggest engine. You know that usually from the fusion engine, but in this deck, uh, it gives you options to go into any other kind of deck because you can even special summon Banks the Ogre with it because it's not level restricted. And uh, there you have a lot of plays. You could run the Lone Fire engine. I did decide not to because the deck kind of is too clogged up already and I couldn't fit into it because I wanted to stick to the dark theme. But in the end, uh, you can obviously do whatever you want to. With uh, Dying Tonya Cobra, you can search cards like Super Poly or Normal Poly. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. I run one Fusion Substitute as well for the draws and stuff like that. Getting cards back to your extra deck can be quite nice since you will have a lot of monsters on your field already with uh, the Office Scorpio. 
Um, I run double Primal Burn Squid Razira. You could bump it down to one. But uh, yeah, you can, it doesn't matter that you can't take all monsters uh, your opponent controls, which can be quite neat if uh, you're playing Thunder Dragons and stuff like this, and they all get reduced and you can all do quite a lot of damage with cards like the Chimera Flesia and stuff like that. But uh, like if they have levels, for example. But the thing is, if the card uh, leaves the field, you can place one player counter and you special summon monster opponent controls again, which is pretty neat because then you can special summon those kind of cards from uh, your graveyard or hand at this point again. This card is basically just like a on summon fusion technically, like you can fuse with your opponent's monsters, but yeah, they have to be uh, okay for the summon, like they have to be the right attribute and so on, and it's kind of it's kind of harsh. Like, I mean, they are treated as dark, so you can use anything, but I mean like they, it, it can be useful, but also kind of be useful. Like you, you'll see what I mean if you play the deck. Um, uh, one player playing Serac, oh, I can't pronounce those names, but I, I'm, I'm not even trying at this point anymore. It's like somewhat of a battle trap and a searcher. Don't have to run it, it can come up, but mainly it will be sent away by a lure of darkness, for example. Uh, one fusion recovery, it, you can search it, it's quite neat in the deck sometimes. So go into another fusion card if your opponent negates anything and so on. Uh, one polymerization for the fusions. Uh, one dark hole to break your opponent's board. You could play Raigeki as well, but since I'm trying to keep it budget, and Raigeki is not the cheapest card, uh, sticking to Dark Hole here. One Fusion Substitute, already explained why. Uh, Foolish Burial, mainly you want to send uh, like the Hydra kind of guy to the graveyard uh, because you can special them from the graveyard. But also there's other options because you have quite some options to revive monsters. So it would even work for like Office Scopio sometimes if you can get it back out. Uh, Interrupted Kaiju Slumber. Basically, you break your opponent's board, get a strong monster on board, maybe fusion summon with it because you can uh, create a dark monster out of thin air. Can be quite neat. Super poly since it's searchable in the deck and you can get rid of opponent's monsters. Predator Plast uh, is a neat card, can be problematic if you don't have enough Predator Plant monsters in the deck or Predator cards. I guess uh, Predator Ponics and Predator Puning uh, counts as well in this sense. But it can still be problematic to get it off a lot of the time. You could run it at two if you want to i actually think it's needed because that gets your monsters onto the field but in the end you can do whatever you want i run double predator ponics and double predator pruning but you can actually run triple pruning and only one ponics if you want to because this card negates the effect of the monster so it can be quite annoying plus you have to pay um yeah and with this card you can actually revive your fusion monsters back so you could change the setting of this um, Greedy Venom Fusion Dragon will not come up that much, could come up against Thunder Dragons or something like this, for example, if your opponent has high level monsters, which these days kind of hard because there's main Xyz links or anything. Um, Starving Venom comes up a little bit more, I really like the card, got a reprint now, so it's not as expensive as it was at the start. Nukes your opponent's field uh, as well can be quite nice. The new Negate, the Predator Plants actually have a Negate now, it's kind of hard to summon though because you need one Fusion Monster. Which, yet again, technically speaking, could work with uh, Super Poly against Thunder Dragons. So uh, that's also like a neat engine. Triple Pearl and Chimera Flesia. The card isn't as cheap technically. Like, I don't know why, but the card isn't as cheap. Maybe it's worth the searching cards uh, once this guy is in the graveyard. A lot of the Miracle Fusion, uh, Synchro Miracle Fusion shenanigans, I think, is with this card. But in general, pretty good to get rid of your opponent's monsters uh, or high attack points and so on. Can be quite neat. Um, Mud Dragon of the Swamp, basically, for the Super Poly. I run Double Vermilion Dragon Mech, because with uh, Office Scorpio summoning Banks here, Ogre, you can go into it, because for whatever reason, this card is a tuner. Uh, level 6 tuner is not always useful, but it can come up sometimes. This is how you go into like your level 8s. You don't need them uh, at all, but it is just a possible thing that you can do. You can even go into Black Rose if you have uh, <laughs> those two on the field, which will not come up a lot. But be prepared. Well, obviously, you can go for link monsters instead. But I feel like you don't need that much in the extra deck. Like the extra deck can be quite expensive in terms, but you half of the extra deck is irrelevant for uh, our deck profile. One deco talker, just like this card as a standard link three that doesn't cost much. And double apprentice witchling, you can play one land for linkers if you want to. If you want to link away your kaiju, but even your kaiju will be dark. So in the end. It is quite doable to get this guy out and boosting your attack monsters attack points by 5 of 100, being able to recycle a dark card can be quite neat too. You'll see some replays for this deck. 
hope you enjoyed the deck profile give it a like subscribe check out my channel i have actually um a lot of interesting budget decky options uh deck profile options on my channel and i hope you enjoy the video and have a good day